Hi, welcome to Hikate's Crossing Book Review. Today's book review is one of my favourites, Pagan Rites of Passage. It's a really awesome book to really look at things that are happening in your life, your journey, from your birth, from um, as things develop within your own life. You go through and you look at the birth of your child. Then you've got coming of age of your child. Um, initiation, when you're moving into a ritual of commitment, when a student's ready for the craft. Um, hand fasting, um, your commitment to, to another soul. Your midlife, when you've got your decades of your life, the magic of 39, the legend of life. There's so much um, priestess and priesthood when you move into those sort of um, rites of passage, elderhood, um, and then there is the final passage. So I love this book and the way it talks about um, the process, talks about what happening. So I'm just going to begin this a little bit here with birth and paganing. As the setting sun ends the shortest day, so begins the longest night of the year. Snow settles in hollows and covers a sleeping earth, and tiny lights begin to flicker. All through the darkness candles are lit, and rainbow lights flicker on fragrant evergreens, adorned with silvered pine cones, gilded walnuts, blown glass fruits, and birds with spun glass tails. Then at midnight's darkest hour, the yule log is kindled, and the darkness brings forth the light, the divine child of promise, the newborn son of the solar year. And as the sun coming comes up early on yule morning, it brings the promise of life renewed. In a softly illuminated chamber, figures of goddesses move gently across a wall. White candles flicker before a figure of an ancient fertility goddess in a tiny shrine, and a glossy cowrie shells reflect the candlelight. Charms and amulets hung from the pined headboard of a bed, generations old, and a quilt pieced and stitched with designs of protection lays across it. All of the preparations have been made some months in advance for the magical events that soon will take place here the magic of birth. As pagans, we believe that everything in nature is a manifestation of the gods and that everything has a spirit which is a spark of the divine. And so the moment of birth, when the new spirit emerges from darkness into the mundane world, is a reenactment of the birth of the divine child. The moment of birth involves two entities, the mother and the child. And like Yule, the moment of birth is a reenactment of the myth of the great goddess, who in the beginning was the darkness and who brought forth from herself the light. At the moment of birth, each mother is the great goddess, each child the divine child. While the act of giving birth in itself a rite of passage for both mother and child, it is not a convenient time to celebrate for, other, for either party. And so the actual rite of passage is usually put off to a day in the yet near future. Although birth is a mainly physical event, there is much that can be done to mark it as a spiritual and magical event for the mother, and this can be especially important for a woman. It is especially if it was her first child. In ancient Egypt, when a woman was about to give birth, the public room of the house, what we today would call the living room, where guests would be entertained was entirely redecorated for the occasion. The walls were repainted with white wash and then adorned with figures of gods and goddesses who presided over childbirth, Tauret, Bas and Isis. On the platform that served as the family altar, the figures of the gods were removed and the two columns of bricks were constructed upon which the woman gave birth in a squashing position similar to that being used again today in some cases. It was here in the most important room of the house on the family altar 
that the mother brought first her child. In certain forms of early American architecture, there was a room built especially for childbirth, called the birth, the borning room. It was built against the central chimney of the house and had no windows or outside doors. The only source of heat for the room was the bricks of the chimney, the fireplace openings being elsewhere in the house. Historians tell us that the purpose that this was to protect the newborn from, from drafts, but it's just as likely that this was archaic bit of architecture, architecture was devised to prevent spirit of the infant, just now born, bound to the physical body, from escaping, especially up the chimney, a tr traditional exit for spirits. There's so much more to this that I recommend. This is an awesome book to purchase. Um, it tells so much more. That's a little bit in regards to the birthing, the rites of passage. This is just an amazing book that I reference often to read a charm, to read some words, to connect with the gods and goddesses from around the world, to look at the imagery of the artistry. Take a moment to reflect. Take a moment to take a breath and reflect on the passage that I read. And here we have coming of age. Coming of age. The waxing sun of winter has not yet risen in a cold grey morning sky. Across the road, a neighbour's horse stands like a painting on a carved wall, on a cave wall, in a field of white, with her back to the wind, thick winter coat and long chin whiskers. She stands dark and still in the swirling snowflakes. Down the valley, half fires are rekindled and the smoke drifts and mingles with the scent of freshly brewed coffee. The world awakens to another winter day and beneath the blanket of snow, still silent and unseen, new life begins to stir. Well recommended. That's a little bit of a ramble about the book, Pagan Rites of Passage, written by Pauline Campanelli, illustrated by Dan Campanelli. This is a book I recommend that you find. Take care and blessed be from Hikate's Crossing.